and we're live. Hi, Gabe. It's Tuesday night, man. What does that mean? It must be. It must be Tuesday night. (laughs) Because it's Blog Chat. It's Blog Chat. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Blog Chat. Come on in. Take a seat by the campfire. We're going to get the s'mores. Tonight's episode of Blog Chat, we're taking Mm -hmm. you to an area we've been talking about quite a bit Mm -hmm. uh, in Utah, the Abra Canabra. Oh, Canab area. <laughs> that's why. That's why I have to remember. That's why I have to remember now. And that's actually, nice. folks, it's it's all going to be about pro- proper pronunciation tonight, right? That's right. <laughs> it is. I all, said... This is going to be an ongoing theme here. Yep. Um, but we're back to Utah. We're back uh, to the Canab area. We're back to the Grand Staircase Escalante area, mm-hmm. and we're back revisiting Matt. <sighs> One of my favorite trips. Ever. It was. Ever. We right? do it again this year? I, I, yes, please. <laughs> this fine three weeks, right? Yes, yes. Three yeah. weeks together, Matt and I became even closer brothers, right? right. And uh, we did a, our workshop in, in Joshua Tree. Do we have any of our Joshua Tree people in there? Eunice, are you in there yet? LaVon, hello? <laughs> Who's out there? Um, and uh, Martha, Martha. <laughs> Um, so we started with that trip and then we did an, another, like half the trip then was spent in, in Utah and uh, we went to the Nightscaper conference and then we explored that sort of Southern Utah area. And I have to say, Matt, that one of my favorite nights is the night that you wrote about this weekend. Um, and we're going to be talking about tonight. Yeah, that was, that was a good, that was a really, really good one. I want to stop for a second and just say, hey, I learned some good stuff from, from Aaron and his live streams lately. Okay. Those of you that are here, if you could take a second and just hit the share button, whether you're on YouTube or on Facebook, go and share that on your social. It'd be really wonderful. Thanks a lot. Uh, and welcome to Blog Chat. Yeah. So, hey, so that was that was a big, long driving day. It was definitely a big, long driving day. But we had a goal. Yeah. We had a we goal. Had a goal. We, we had heard, you know... The, the Grand Staircase um, is this, you know, just amazing, overreaching, beautiful um, land area that uh, it basically starts in that Canab area and goes all the way up to Capitol Reef. Yeah. Right? So it's like is it 300, 300 miles long or something like that, I believe. And then it's it's tall and somewhat skinny, especially yeah. when you consider how tall it is. Yeah. Um and it, you know, goes to acres. Capitol Reef, starts yeah. in Canab, yeah. puts it in between Bryce, Zion. Yeah. All, you see, so you can kind of, you get a, yep. you get a, you get a, a gist of what kind of, what, what, what's in the neighborhood, right? Yep. All the way down to Arizona. So, yeah, exactly. So g- good stuff. And we did a lot of research on like what to go shoot, what to go yep. explore. Yep. And I think the thing that stuck out to both of us was an arch, right? right. Of course, arches, you know, they... Yep. Before we say it, yes, say we're it. not going to say it yet. <laughs> <laughs> the name of this arch, the title of this live stream. Those should we, of type, you, without, should we type it in first? <laughs> without googling it, without googling, it, you can just look at the top of whatever screen you're at. Yes. Without googling it phonetically, how would you pronounce the name of that arch? Go. Okay. Go. Go. We'll see you in the chat in the comments. Um, by the way, we had to look it up too to make sure that we said it right. Because <laughs> oh, we were saying it wrong the whole time there. I mean, we're just we did. We're, 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 but you know, it didn't it didn't uh, it didn't deter us from getting there. We didn't uh, get luckily, we didn't have to ask locals for directions, right? True, <laughs> because they would have directed us somewhere else. They already knew that we didn't know how to pronounce Canab. <laughs> exactly, they're already saying okay. Exactly. Oh, Seth, Seth, Seth did you look it up, Seth? <laughs> did you look? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right? Girl. Yep. Who ever heard of a silent S? Who ever heard of a silent S? Really? I mean, they could have right? spelled Grover from Sesame Street. I kept thinking of, of, of Grover from Sesame Street. On <laughs> <this>. <laughs> no, Seth, didn't look it up. I was teasing you, Seth. Yeah. <laughs> Seth, yeah. Seth, Seth, you're on. Yeah. Uh, Grover, Good job, Gro- Grovener, Grovener Arch. Grovener Arch. Grovener Arch. So. Grovener Arch. Grovener. Yes. And Matt, you did you did a bit of research um, about about this. Why don't you share some of the research? Yeah, sure. 
Uh, so, so this is funny because I, I think originally when we, when we were talking about this, um, I, you were, you did a little bit more of like the actual, like on the ground research than right, I did. Right. Right. And I think after we shot it, you're like, Hey, did you know who this was named after? And when I was writing the blog post that spurred me to, to share that with everyone yes. else and add a little bit to it. So, so yes, the, this arch is named after somebody that we should all be yes. aware of. Yes. Uh, Gilbert Hovey Grosvenor. He was, he ended up being the first full-time editor of National Geographic magazine, but that's after he married Alexander Graham Bell's daughter, Elise Mary Bell. Uh, and Alexander Graham Bell was in charge of, in a way, the National Geographic Society at the time and bringing on Gilbert. That's when National Geographic had a sea change and became the publication that it is today. He made sure it was richly illustrated uh, and was less dry. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and, and, and he took the National Geographic Society and he took that magazine and turned it into the thing that we find a, a beloved publication today. So he didn't name this arch himself. Right. There was a photographer or photographers, depending on which story you read, that were out there and they saw this arch and they wanted to honor him for the massive achievements of what he was doing to change the publication and raise awareness for places like that. And they named the arch after him. It's a pretty beautiful arch. It's a, it's I mean, it, it, it's a pretty beautiful arch. And, um, and it's, and it's also in a very remote area, Truth. right? It was, yeah. it was really, really, yeah. it's a, it's, it's not, yeah, it's just simply not easy to get to. So it's yeah. sort of a, you know, an under visited location um, yeah. that just kind of, it, you know, what's, what's, what's amazing about it. It's like, you feel like you're in planet of the apes as you're kind of driving out into this landscape. And then all of a sudden out of sort of the, the sort of in the, in the plain area, here comes this like hulking, I think you call, you described it as a hulking double sandstone arch. Yeah. And that's perfect because that's what it's like. All of a sudden you're just sort of on this dirt road and then it's like a spaceship had kind of just landed thousands of years ago and kind of just left that amazing uh you know skeletal remains or something like that it's yeah. a really really cool uh shape however it, it was we should talk about the journey it took to get there sure right? so so let's just <laughs> take a look so canab is here right, right? so yep. we went all the way up the faster we, way yeah the faster way which the faster if you can imagine we went all the way up this this highway and past Bryce Canyon over here, and then down and around here to get to Kodachrome Basin first. Right. So this entire area, we skirted around the edge of, if you could see the whole outline here, the area, now I have it. We skirted around the edge of uh, Bryce Canyon and the rest of Grand Staircase to come around to the top, or part of the top, because Grand Staircase goes all the way up over here too, right. which is gigantic. It's massive. So, so we came around, we drove past Bryce. That was a fun long stop. We waited yep. like 15 minutes there uh, to get through that light. Uh, and then we went to Kodachrome Basin. Yeah. Uh, and in Kodachrome Basin, we just caught sunset. Um, and I don't know if I ever showed you this panel before. I never right. saw this panel before, but I remember yeah. this moment. This was, we, we, you know, we were there for, it was like not Kodachrome 64, but it was like Kodachrome maybe 200. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> which, never, which never existed, right? Uh, I know that, but right. you know, I'm just right. saying, if Kodachrome 64 is the best sunset, this was yeah. like Kodachrome 200. Which, yeah, it's, you know, the, it's, the lower the number, the better, right? <laughs> it's, it's definitely picturesque, uh, and we yeah. should spend some more time there. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's an we interesting. Shoot it in black right. and white. Shoot in black and white. Yeah, <laughs> I think it'd be wonderful at sunrise and sunset. Yeah. Uh, middle of the day it might be challenging unless you're shooting macro. So yeah. Uh, so, but yeah. so yeah. Jay is asking, you know, he, he, looking at our map, he say doing an overnighter is it better to come from the north as the south? So go back to that map for a second, Matt. Yeah, sure. Because you know, right? I mean, I was looking, about to show Cottonwood Canyon. Yeah. Looking at that map, you like? I mean, if, if we're just looking at maps, yeah. Uh, which way would you go? <laughs> I mean, look, just looking at from there to there, then yeah, we we wouldn't we would just go to the southern way. Like that seems a lot less miles to get there, <laughs> right? Yeah, but you see right. that yellow line? You see that yellow line, right? 
you know, in the south. Right, there's, by the way, there's no trains. Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. There we go. So, right, okay. you do, that's, it, right, that's it, it. It doesn't suggest to take Cottonwood Canyon Road. <laughs> right, so, right, so this, folks, the northern way is more, is faster in two hours, 11 minutes, too. Yeah. To, 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 uh, but, but if but, I drag it this way, it won't, it, let's see what happens. It doesn't even want you to go there. It's like, what are you thinking? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's basically telling most people to avoid Cottonwood Canyon Road. So right. So it's it's on this dirt right road. So you got to yeah. go way more dirt road. We, the reason why we chose that northern route is because we only had to do what I think eight miles of dirt road. It wasn't yeah. that much, and yeah. the dirt road wasn't that bad to be honest. I mean, no, we, we no, were really there wasn't. in a good season. There wasn't any you know yeah. washouts or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, but. I think it's 40 miles or something like that of dirt road the other way. Yeah. Um, so that, and that would have taken more than two hours. Google mm -hmm. and, and Google doesn't even recognize that. I mean, maybe if you got a, maybe an insane Jeep or a really cool all wheel drive or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but everyone yeah. we talked to said, yes. Cause we're like, what Google maps does. is telling us to go this way. Yeah. Um, now there is plenty of other stuff to see on, on, it was Cottonwood Road, Cottonwood, right? Yeah, Cottonwood Canyon. So, Road. I mean, yep. taking your time and just going up that road and, and camping yeah. or, you know, doing stuff along the way, mm -hmm. that in itself is its own, you know, journey. Yeah. Right? So, so uh, Jay, there's uh, there's your there's your long answer to a short question. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and it still comes all the way down here. It comes out by one of the other places that Gabe and I visited, which is the Toadstool Hoodoo. So, somebody else was asking. Uh, Kathy was asking any quick picks on where to shoot the Milky Way out near Canab. A ton of places, a ton yeah. of places. Um, I think if I think if the easiest way is, uh, I hate to say this, but go on Instagram and and look up Canab or Grand Staircase uh, as places, and you'll see a whole bunch of locations that are pretty close yeah. by. The to toadstools are popular. There's a bunch of popular. There's a bunch of places, um, right. and there'll be a bunch of people going out and and and. Uh, you know, and, 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 and going to, to do exactly that. So we'll, we'll definitely have more of that information later, yeah. but, but, you know, she, she brings up, Kathy brings up a good question, Matt, uh, yeah. because what direction does Ruffiner Arch face? Oh, well, we got to go back to the blog post for that. Before we do that, yes, I yes, just yes. wanted to point out that yes. on the conference website, if you go to about in the Canaban area info, yes, put a lot of time into providing you links and inspiration yes. here. Yep. Uh, so if you wanted to go there, uh, Kathy, then I'm just going to post the link in the chat here. Uh, you can check out all of these and it even gives you just, you know, ideas on how close these things are. So, and um, I'll also say, I just was in Kanab and uh, I went back to uh, the uh, BLM uh, has a visitor center yes. for the Grand Staircase Escalante. So you can also talk to the Rangers there, the people on site and tell them exactly what you want to do. And they might be able to suggest some things um, uh, for you on that as well. Awesome. That's a great suggestion, Dave. Yeah. So super friendly, super friendly. And I think that's one of the, I think that's the link that I have on the, the Nightscaper website, the, the <clears throat> link that we just put there. Um, so uh, I'll look that up. Yeah, you can, you can look that up. So um, yeah. And dirt roads. Yep. Fun for a Jeep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So we were talking about Cottonwood Canyon Road. Um, it, there are some people that say it's passable by a, a regular passenger car. It's a it's a hard packed dirt road, but if it rains, there's going to be washouts. There might be rocks yeah. sticking up. So you want to have some sort of clearance, and you probably want all wheel or four wheel drive anyway, yeah. just in case because you don't want to be stranded out there, right? Bring a buddy, bring safety stuff, all of the things you should normally do when traveling in the back country. And this is a back country. You know? yeah. Anytime yep. you see Bureau of Land Management, there's not going to be a lot of services. Yeah, the visitor center also uh, right across the street from uh, the Hampton Inn and the um, and the convention center, I went and visited that too. And they have brochures and also super knowledgeable people. I just went in there again and just was just, I would walk around and just be inspired. They have a lot of pamphlets yeah. on everything, uh, a, bunch of, a bunch of stuff that you can yeah. kind of uh, take there advantage is. of. The Bureau of Land Management. Yeah, uh, it's like a mile outside of town. Yeah, right. Yeah. Whatever. This one right there is the the place that you go to get a lot of information. Very helpful people there. Mm -hmm. So great suggestion, Gabe. 
we had a lot of fun talking to the Rangers there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, we, uh, so Gabe was saying, uh, what direction does it face? Well, let's take a look. Uh, so, uh, we did spend a fair amount of time looking at photo pills before we left. Um, if you're wondering why photo pills looks a little different here, because this is a screenshot from an iPad. Don't forget, you can use an iPad for photo pills and yeah. have a little bit larger of an interface there, right? A lot more real estate. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if you have one, uh, use it. So, so yeah, you could see that here, actually, I, I changed the perspective. Notice in the upper right-hand corner, uh, north is pointing off to the the left, uh, up to the, yeah, it's pointing this away. So, so basically, um, where we were standing with the arch, you know, north is off of our right shoulder there. So, um, gosh, it's hard to say which way it's facing because it has so much land mass, right? Yeah. Because this bowl. So I'd say that it's the arch is north. Mm -hmm. Let's say almost from where we were standing here, the mm -hmm. arch would be to the north or northeast a little bit. And then, of course, you see the Milky Way coming off over here to the south, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, which is the core? The core is does not fall, but does not fall behind no, or near. close to no. the arch, right? So, yeah. So, Matt, you know what's funny? I don't, I, I don't remember if we did it uh, on the trip, but I just did it before our talk, and I actually Googled uh, Governor Arch at night, and. Uh, you are one of three people that have a picture of it at night, according to Google. Get out. Yeah. Yeah. And really, because I was like, Dude, who else? Because I thought, A, I thought you'd be the first that have it with the Milky Way. Oh, and and no. we'll get to that, right? How yeah. you got the Milky Way into the arch. Um, but because, uh, you know, A, I think it's a, a distant place. It's mm -hmm. uh, hard to get to. Then when you're out there, it's like, Go uh, camp. Uh, yeah, were you camping or are you yeah. going to do the long haul? And Matt, God bless him. He's, he uh, drove the way home on that one. Uh, and uh, Oh, that was painful. Because yeah, yeah, <laughs> we stopped shooting at like 1.30. Yeah, it was a two, two, in the hour, morning. two and a half hour drive home. That was not, yeah. you know, definitely. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that on, yeah. on anyone else, but we're crazy sometimes. Yeah. Um, but, right, so there's very few people who have shot this at night or at least have, or at least have tagged it as... Yeah. Maybe they're tagging it as Grovesner, Mark. Uh, <laughs> Grovesner. <laughs> Gr Grovesner. <laughs> exactly. So, um, but no. So, uh, so either they're not tagging it, or according to Google, not many people have been there at night. But it's amazing pictures during the day, dramatic, and we just we had to go. We had right. to go. Yeah. So. Uh, somebody asked when, what time of year I shot it. This was um, March third, twenty twenty one. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. No. We were there in uh, end of April or May or something like that. March. Oh, I'm sorry. Five fourteen. 14. I, why did I see three? Oh, that's because I, I had a different processing time. So, yeah, May 14th. <laughs> May 14th. There we go. The other that's end. The correct May 14th. Yes. May 14th. Yes. Yep. 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 So, we got so Judy checking in. Hi, Judy. Oh, that's mom. Hi, mom. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> got Kathy. Thank you for that. Yes. Uh, good. <clears throat> Yeah, we got some other people saying hello. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so uh, let's let, let's backtrack a little bit because yeah. I think we'll go, let's go back to the blog. Okay. Y we went to Kodachrome. Yeah. And then let's. How else did we we talked about which way it faced? Yeah, well, we we definitely we did this to make sure we'd understand how late we were staying out. Yes. Which oh, is right, why we exactly. arrived there so late. Right. You know, we said, "All right, let's hit Kodachrome at sunset, and yep. then we'll just wait forever." For the Milky Way core to come up. <laughs> and we'll drive slowly to get there. No, let's get there with some light out. You know, we ended up getting there with some during twilight, but we waited until 1 30 a.m. to shoot the core. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, so so we knew that all these things prior to leaving the hotel. And that's really important, right? So um, so yeah, we got there. And I remember the first thing we did was set up way back. Yeah. You know, we set yeah. up way back and we set up a long rip yeah for star that's a, cool shot. that's a cool shot i like that shot i like i like that you call it the pre-shoot shoot, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> i mean you have a goal right right you gotta work right. the scene yeah you know? and then i i remembered when we were at capitol reef um we were discussing this and we were shooting the, the temples of the sun and the moon mm -hmm. uh, 
and how we lit those from really far away mm -hmm. using the, the cello and a viola at that point. Yeah. Cause, uh, cause the fiddle didn't exist. So, so yeah, you, you, you were the one that hiked out and, and dropped the, that light that's off to the right there. Cause yeah. that's a single. Light. Yeah. That's a, that's a single light. Right. I walked on the, the road that we we're driving on. Um, right. We immediately saw what, what needed to happen. Yep. And and I think we immediately saw what needed to happen. And we also immediately agree, agreed, and this was a really yep. always a good thing, an important thing, I think, when you're you're photographing you're 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 photographing with other people, is like, okay, how are we gonna attack this? Because yep. we could be easily said, Oh, I see it wide, and then you know, oh well, I see it close, and then well, you're not we did a little bit of that. Yeah, you're not in <laughs> each other's shots or whatever. But I, I, I don't know, Matt. I always like I have to say I, I want to shoot it all, right? We're, yeah. Especially we can't we come all this distance. So I'm gonna yeah. shoot it wide, I'm gonna shoot it close, I'm gonna yeah. shoot it medium, I'm gonna shoot it medium wide, you know, yeah. I'm gonna do it all. Yeah. Um, but I think you know, we we said, Hey, let's you know, it, we were just so in awe that we just said, you know, we were immediately we were like, Wow, this is a great shot, you know, right here. And then let's just kind of step by step, get a little closer and see what else we see, see what else we see. And knowing that it's going to also look awesome right when we get underneath it yeah. too, right? Yep. Um, so it's just going to look a lot bigger the closer we get. Exactly. So we have we have light stage right set up mm -hmm. all the way in the distance, very far away, small light source, but throwing, uh, you, you know, a, you know, quite a bit, I guess, of light, you know, from a distance, making it a softer Mm -hmm. uh, light source, and we, I think we had this at like thirty percent or something like that. I think thirty percent. That's what I remembered. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember that. Too. Yeah, like that, so that sounds about light, right. a mile away too. Exactly. I know. You yeah. know, we usually talk about light painting. We talk about usually, usually anywhere from point point one yep. to like five percent. Um, yep. But here we we had to crank it up because of the distance and stuff. And and I will say, you know, that uh, also it still wasn't a lot of light. You know, as you can kind of see what it's naturally yep. doing. You yeah. know, to the area is yes, that sandstone is reflecting back that light and taking in that, you know, taking reflecting back that light nicely. But you can still see the ground's pretty dark. Yep. You know, it's not like you know, we were big polluters here, you know. <laughs> this is this is Bortle One country. Bortle one. Bortle, Bortle one. one, which which how that's the best, right? It's the best. That's the best. Bortle, Bortle one is zero the darkest is void of space. Well, I don't want to be there. I don't want to be there. <laughs> or Carlsbad Caverns. Yeah, that's right above that North Star right over there. <laughs> <laughs> right on. So let's take a look. So you shot this with the Nikon Z, Z62, 24 to 70 at 34. And the sky is 31 frames that shot is... at four minutes. I think I missed stack. that. This is my 15 millimeter. I gave I gave Chris the wrong information. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, so, my bad. Yeah, that looks yeah, that looks pretty wide. That right? doesn't that look like a 34. <laughs> okay. All right, all right. That's 50-50. Well, that's that's the, that that's your uh yeah. but the rest right. of it is correct. I, yeah. I think this 31 frames, four minutes, and it, was, it ended up being an hour and a half. Right. Yep. An hour and a half. Hour I, and I half. always I do like that, those super wides. You know, you've got this is a really cool star trail because not only you, I mean, you've got the North and the South in this, mm. this is pretty cool. This is right. You got your North star, right? Which we see kind of to the left of the arch, but that's mm -hmm. South, right. Folks look, take a look at that on the left hand side, those straight, straight lines, that's South right there. So we have, east? Oh, oh, sorry. East, east, east. east. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And then we get it's beyond east. east, 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 so east yeah. My mistake. Close my mistake. Yeah. yeah. You would need to pano this. To get oh, the <laughs> good idea, good idea. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Do east with that. With that straight. With that straight. So that's that is a lot of information and a lot of interesting star movement. I love this shot. I love Thank this you. shot. Thank you. And and we were discussing this, I guess, as we were eating our subway sandwiches. Uh, <laughs> Delicious. Did we have subway that night? We probably did. I yeah, think we, we got something in Bryce, and I remember it being. Oh, we stopped at Ruby's. Uh, right. It wasn't Subway, right? It was, yeah. I, I remember Probably it being was. very good, but I also think it was the the company and the atmosphere that made those sandwiches it, even better. It made it better. Yeah. <laughs> as, as we were sitting there in the tailgate of our Ford F one fifty pickup truck that we had for three weeks, uh, we're we're talking about how yeah, the the arch is nice, and there's a, enough room that you can tell um, that yeah. there's an arch yeah. there. But yeah. we wanted to see more of it because there's actually two arches. Yeah. And in, from this perspective, you can only see one of them. And it doesn't pull away enough from the landform that's behind it. So we're like, we got to creep up on this. I tell you, I just saw the movie uh, 
uh, uh, Eternals, was it, by Marvel? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that thing looks like a centurion or whatever that's kind of coming out of the earth. (laughs) You just gave it away, man. Oh, shoot. (laughs) We found one. We found found one. one. Yeah. So for for this next one, I didn't, I didn't, I don't think I crept up that much. I think this was, my camera was like five feet away from the other one. Okay. But I did put on uh, a longer foot. That's funny. See, figure five. It says we got him. We got him flipped. They got flipped. We got flip them. Yeah, so flip them. This is actually the thirty-four millimeter one down yep. here. My bad. So, yep. and so I this, like that shot too. It's it's tight, right? Yeah, I like it. it well, it, everything looks correct here, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. The, 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 yeah, there's, there's the distortion. Yeah. yeah, no distortion. Yeah. You see the nice crispy shadows mm-hmm. from the low-level landscape lighting. And the depth that it creates in that bowl back there, and the shadow that the arch casts—I I like all these things about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but the the landscape was shot separately from the sky. This is star point stacking for the sky at ISO twelve thousand eight hundred. And you guys may notice, and I left it in there because it's natural that there's a green cast to the sky. Yeah. And if you know what that is, leave it in the comments. Um, but Gabe was the one that taught me what this was on my first trip to the Devil's Tower. Well, that's that's that place is just you know Devil's Tower. Similar to this, it's like full of, well, even more so, energy. but energy. Yeah. But he, right, this this has a, a sort of a Devil's Tower kind of just that it's coming out of nothing. I mean, it's very yeah, interesting. I'm, I'm sure that there was some sort of celebrations or rituals. That yeah, so. yeah, definitely. Uh, it's definitely. imposing. Yep, air glove. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So what what'd you do next? What what was the next considerations, Matt? Yeah, so after that, you know, like we're we were we were talking about what we want to do. After this, actually, while these were shooting, yeah, uh, we crept up on it because we'd already gotten yeah. our ground shots and we were only going for star trails for most of the time. So we were we were already working on we walked up and dropped a water bottle there and we <laughs> scattered around and even with flashlights, I have a picture of that where we're looking, but this is just a little talking about that is a portal one there, so you guys can see. Um uh we did get up really close to it and then we figured out what we needed to do. So uh, I set up my pano rig because I knew it was going to be easier to have a click stop base on the bottom and have a reliable overlap 50% for night shots. I preach that. Uh, so I worked it out and, you know, we also talked about, you know, what was the right exposure duration. We had to balance being in a Bortle one class sky which is super dark right adding low level landscape lighting like what should the exposure length be to have enough information and we're already at iso 12800 so instead of going all the way down to nine seconds which is way not enough right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh i decided to cheat between them you know mm-hmm. and not do 18 i think i did 15 seconds so yeah i did i went for 15 seconds on that mm-hmm. uh and that just it was spot star enough you know it's still below the default setting um uh, but uh so for a pano it's really great so we did our test well, shots matt so let's just let's take a step back here you know yeah you on this whole trip you you <laughs> when we, we we got bored of that well when you made the packing video let's so, so you made the packing video <laughs> oh i forgot about, about what that. gear you were bringing with on this three-week trip yeah and and it was the kitchen oh. sink because it had all the <laughs> the tripods, the VR equipment, all this, and, and you, you, but you were like, "Listen, I'm here. I've been stuck inside, whatever, and I'm, yeah. I'm going to be doing pano, pano, pano. I'm going to do a pano a day, or, or all I'm going to shoot is panos." I think he said, "All I'm going to do is shoot is panos," and I'm like, "That is pretty mind blowing, right?" Yeah. Um, and I have had pano cameras, like I've gotten a, a Hasselblad X Pan, I've had a wide Alux camera, and it is amazing just to be to force yourself to see in that beyond even 16 by nine sort of way. Um, and, uh, and it, it, it's, 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 it's this trip, especially that lent itself. And I think for this image that we're, that we're seeing that the panda was the perfect solution. Yeah. I had, so. I had Milky Way on the brain too. I admit it, but it was the season. It was May. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. A, it's okay to chase the core in May because it's up, you know, man. Yeah, and we got the Star Trail. You got the Star Trail shot before, got right? As we, you know, that's it. We we were got the, way, the Milky Way hadn't risen yet. We were there, yeah. so we got the Star Trail shot. 
you know, uh, and some star points and some different compositions. Right. But we knew the end goal, and you have definitely inspired me to do more panos on that trip, too. Um, but you said, you know what, the end goal here is going to be a pano. And I'm like, you're right. And here it is. Oh. Ah. Ah. <laughs> the vertorama. It's the a vertorama. So this was my warm-up shot because we, we set up the lights. We set up additional lighting up close. As you and I were standing there and we're looking at covering almost 270 degrees yeah. of, of from left to right, you know, from beyond the arch on one side all the way to beyond the core on the other side. We had to cover a lot of extra room and provide detail in areas that didn't have detail. So this grove of trees was really close to the right. And I wanted to... I wanted to do a vertorama because it was really tall. And this is one of the, the resulting, you know, shots from that. I didn't show this in the blog post, but, you know, it ended up having a lot of detail. That's a cool um, shot. And I love that. I love the light we got coming through the trees there. Yeah, we worked, we kind of were working more light painting at closer up too, because just the, the sandstone arch was reflecting nicely and getting some nice detail. But yeah, those trees, the grass, the brush, was just dark. dark. There was nothing. There was That's, nothing there. It was dark. We had to add all the information. Right. Yeah. And it, this wasn't the shot that I wanted, but I wanted to to work a vertorama too. And I and it worked out. It's not my favorite thing ever, especially right. because we didn't take the time to go brush out all the sand for the <laughs> thousands, <laughs> right, thousands right. of footprints there. Uh, but there was no deadfall around, or I might have considered it. You know. And this would make a good story shot, you know, on Instagram. You got the nice yeah. open headliner up top. Oh, and... good point. Good point. <laughs> are you are you hinting something? I mean, I've hinted something. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah. Then then we went. Uh, then we went over and said, "Let's let's do the shot, right?" So, okay. I, I think I gave you shot this pano too, didn't you? Well, yeah, we were standing. I don't know, we were like pretty not close. Uh, pretty close. Like, well, at least six feet distance, Matt. <laughs> yes, of course. Of course. But uh yeah, we you know we, I remember we, pulling my pano and then saying, All right, you can have the spot. You know, I ripped my pano, I was like, here, you yeah. know what? You want the spot, I'm gonna get out of your way because yeah. I got my shots, you know. Cool. Yeah. And it's the right thing to do, brother. So. <laughs> panos panos are for everyone. Panos are for everyone. <laughs> now mind you folks, I, I use my pano rig. Um, because I like the click stops mm -hmm. in the dark click stops just make sense rather than turning your light on over and over to make sure you get the right degree markings. So even if you get a pano base and not like, you know, a multi-level pano shooting, I think a click stop base is a, is a very, very helpful tool in the tool bag. If you're a night photographer and you want to do panos. Agreed. Yep. Um, but you, I could have done this. I did do this in a single row. You know, so this is this is a very wide angle lens and it's dead level so that there's no distortion on the arch, right? So this is the zero distortion fifteen millimeter? It's the zero D, it's true. Yeah. And when it's dead level, it doesn't have that distortion. So we got the eight frames of coverage there. And you can see that I, I definitely started it way mm -hmm. beyond uh give yourself the some arch room. Here. Yeah. And I ended it over there. Now I could have been even more conservative and shot beyond one more frame on either side, but it worked out. So, so eight frames, eight frames. Eight frames. Yep. That's cool. Yep. And the reason we overlap 50% with night panos is you got to give the software the best chance possible to identify similar things as it's stitching across. Yep. You just got to do it. Yeah. Uh, 40% or 30% is, is too risky. So, yep. so we got that. Um, and I processed, I processed this, by choosing, let's say, uh, one of these images, I'm going to use this as an example. And I processed one of these, I processed the foreground and the sky separately. Mm -hmm. And I used the new AI assisted masks where I'd create a sky mask first and I'd make the adjustment for the sky. And then I duplicate like that. that mask and I make a separate adjustment for the ground. And then I synchronize those settings across all of the images but you have to go back after that and i don't know if i have that as a screenshot here i don't you have to recalculate those those masks, masks right when you do it um you have to go into each frame but it's still a lot faster than going and clicking through and making all those masks separately yeah uh, so so it would save it was a big time saver and i did that um did you not process this until 
because when we were there, the new version of Lightroom wasn't out. So did you process I just, this? I just reprocessed it. You just reprocessed it. Oh, you oh. Got, you and got more out of it. You right? want you want you want to see something awful? I'll show you guys okay, because I love it. you all. Um, that's the first. There we go. All right. So, yeah. So let's see which one was first. Which one came first? Obviously, the one on the right came first. Yeah. You see how there's there's a loss of contrast. But you probably process, processed it that night in the hotel room. I you're... did. I, mean, dude, <laughs> I was still amped because I drove coffee before we left home or something. But yeah. So yeah, I have two versions of this. This one I processed before the AI assist, right? And this other one over here, I I definitely had a lot more control. Yeah. Uh, over the highlights and getting rid of some of the other oopsies, you know. Yeah. So more vignetting uh, in the other one. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Yeah. So. I was, I was pretty happy about cool. that. And, That's good and to also, show. Yeah, I mean, it's we always we're honest about that. How we yeah. go back and reprocess stuff all the time because you have new knowledge. And if Ansel could do it, tool. we can. Exactly. <laughs> I normally don't recommend getting rid of sky junk during pano stitching because usually the stitching gets rid of it. But I did this time. Okay. Because there was only eight frames, uh, so I did get rid of the st stupid satellites and wonderful planes that take us places like this. Now you process this in PT GUI. I did, which is that's your that that is your go to panel it software, is. correct? Yeah. It is, and I'll, I'll I'll tell you why. I've spent a lot of time being disappointed by the lack of control that the other options off, don't offer. Wait, that do offer. That was a double negative. <laughs> I want more control. Yeah. So I choose PT GUI Pro. So. So. Um, yeah. How long do you, do you think it took you in PT GUI? It only added like 10 minutes. Okay. I didn't have to add any I didn't have to add any control points because I shot a 50% overlap. Okay. And there was sufficient contrast in the resulting images. So it's when you're in really low contrast situations and there's a lot of similar low information areas that you have to struggle to find corresponding control points. Mm -hmm. And you can only do that with PT GUI. Mm -hmm. The other yeah. pieces of software don't give you that level of control. So if you're serious about panos, you're going to end up using PT GUI. Right. Good is Lightroom or Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Better is what the NovaFlex software? Mm, NovaFlex doesn't make it. Panorama Studio. Panorama Studio. Yeah. Right, right, right. It's also German. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it comes PT... kitted with the NovaFlex kit at BH. That's yep. what I was yeah. <laughs> It does. Yeah. Um, and then best PT GUI. Right. Yeah, so for sure. Always a good, better, best. You and I have a mutual friend that lives and breathes it, and that'd be Mike yeah. Murray. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So when he first first started using it, he talked. He showed me how difficult it was, and I didn't want to use it for years. Right, he did the same to me. <laughs> I was like, "Whoa, that's hard." I said, "Okay, here, you could do it for me." <laughs> and now that well, he does spherical panels, and yeah, yeah, he's a he's a yeah. big deal. Um. However, now that I use it, I use the parts that are necessary for me, and I don't find it to be that complicated. In fact, it makes panos when other software doesn't. Yeah. End of story. Yeah, of I story. find, right, uh, Matt, I think exactly. I mean, where I think night photographers struggle with panos is those is when you have those dark skies, right? And, and it's it don't you don't have enough foreground to align. And that's where Lightroom, Photoshop, and the mm -hmm. ones that you just press one button and they do their own thing and you have no control yeah. over, right? That's where you say, oh, we'll get duplication of stars, we'll lose stars, and yeah. things just won't line up unless you have a, a sort of some contrast and a nice kind of uh, jagged, you know, sort of uh, foreground area for it to really, a defining foreground, we'll call it. Right. So I, I still have the, the PT GUI project here. Ah, uh, that's great. I love it. Right? Okay, here so, we go. Oh my goodness, we're getting it. This is this should be this should alone is like a two hour class, and we're gonna do it in two minutes. All right, I'm gonna give it. you guys just a, a quick <laughs> thing. The first thing you see when you load it up, you export TIFFs with all of your baked in adjustments from okay. from uh, Lightroom, and then it brings them in here, and it's gonna ask you what the focal length is, yep. right? And then you're gonna click create panorama. And there's a lot of other things here along the side that you can do that I don't touch a lot of these things, right? Okay. Um, the masking I have touched, and you'll see that, and there's a lot of master classes out there, and we will provide one at, at some point. Uh, but you can say between this one and that one, 
I'd like to relate these two areas. And you see how there's a circle here mm -hmm. and an X over there and you switch mm -hmm. between them. Mm -hmm. So you can then work on masking. You can say, I prefer this and I don't prefer that by masking it out. So Ooh. like you have masking features in Photoshop, you have that available. That's cool. There's a lot of ways to look at the different image parameters here and whether you want to apply linear global camera curves and stuff. The control points is where you're going to see all of the places that the software identified all of the similar things. So if we look between three and four, we're going to see all of these different points are uh, identified by the software. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing multi rows, you'll be different rows where they'd have di similar things matched together. I didn't touch this for this panel, but I just wanted to show you guys what's there. Nice. There's an optimizer. There's an HDR thing, which it does really well, right? Uh, and project settings, but let's get away from those windows because they do look daunting, and that's why I stayed away. When you see this, enough control points, you don't have to go into those other windows. Yay. Sweet. Right? So I'll pull that out of the way. This is the crop that I had. Oh, I like seeing the, uh, right? I like seeing the splice there. Right? Yep. Look at that, right? See the, yep. the, the little rivers running through it, folks? Yeah. So that's I'm just the jigsaw puzzle. Pull these out of here and show you guys. So this is the pano, right? And if I wanted to, to jigger with it, I can actually grip this and I can move it around and wave it around like Ooh. this. Can you do that in the other ones? No, you can't do that, right? Uh, you can also, you also have sliders along the bottom that control uh, Whoa. Uh, the width and height, you know, and that's the, the angles that you're going to have. So you can really control the perspective there. And yes, you can see where it's deciding to blend to the images mm -hmm. on the optimum information as it sees it. And then over here, you can see all the projections, right? So you don't have this many projections in any other piece of software that mm -hmm. I know of. Right? So you might not use more than a third of these, but when you want to use them, they're there, right? Uh, and then there's your blending and stuff that you can work on here. But we're not really getting that deep into it. I just wanted to show you guys why I choose it because... I can say this is my horizon. Now it's it's square, and this is where I want to crop it and with exactitude. You know, like I want this, and and I'm just going to bring it down to that. Now nah, maybe there. And this is what I did to make my decisions. Like, okay, that's great. And after I I did all of this is when I said, all right, I'm done. You know, I I chose from among these projections until I got the one I like, which ended up being equ equirectangular. And I set the field of view to 270 degrees, which is that bottom slider. There okay, guys. gotcha, yep. So so that ended up being uh, my final composition, which wasn't final until I finished baking it in Lightroom. Uh, so, and that ended up being this, which you guys saw, that was the project as I saved it. So there you go, there's another reason that you can use it. If you're not sure if you're done, like a Photoshop document, like a like a PSD or a PSB, you can save your project and come back to it. And you can go fiddle with it again, uh, as long as you don't delete those source files that it's using to build it. Uh, so that helps out a lot, right? So skipping out of that, I, I said, I'm done. I, it's cooked. Make me a final TIFF coming out of that. And I brought that back into Lightroom. And I still found things I wanted to adjust, like uh -huh. this, these highlights were too big. So I came back on that TIFF. And I added some more local adjustments. Uh, and that's where I finally got those highlight controls that I wanted. Because sometimes when you make another uh, image out of a raw file and it gets combined, you lose some of that contrast control. So came back. And then I came for the classic crop for a pano. I set my crop in Lightroom to one by three. Nice. And I chose this. So now it's like classic pano. And it happened to fit neatly into what I... Oh, heard. look at it, too. Like, you're looking at the PowerPoint right at the arch. Perfect. Yeah. And yeah. fully embracing the rising Milky Way. Yeah. Yeah. So it worked out pretty good, and I'm, I'm stoked. Yeah, um, it was great. Great, yeah. great. There it so, is. Boom. So, yeah. So there's the final. Um, and I, I, back to gear for a second. Like, this took, only took two light panels. Okay, um, yeah. Tripod and a camera and say a, a ball head or a rotator if you want to use that, right? Um, so, and this one I, I used uh, the Irix 15 millimeter. So, uh, this one was I, the Irix, not the uh, it was, it was wow. the Irix, yeah. Nice. Yep. 
Yeah, I know for sure it's in the metadata. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And it's hard to believe, but it's ISO 12,800 too. So uh, pretty pretty stoked about the results there. Uh, yeah. Do we have any questions? Oh, well, we have a we have a comment. The jiggly lines remind me of old panos made up. Oh yeah, yep, that's it. Yes, yes, very nice. Uh, thank you, Katrina. Thank you. Uh, cool. So, um, Gabe, you told me when we were getting together that that you processed your pano too. Is so you know, it's funny. I just processed my pano like uh, two weeks ago or something like that. And I don't remember seeing your image, right? Um, I, I don't think I had seen it really, or maybe I saw it in passing, but I just kind of, I have my own, I, it's interesting. Now, looking at yours, even though we were very in a similar spot, uh, we both processed it a bit differently and, and, and different techniques. So, uh, yeah, let me show, let's see, where do I have it? Let's make sure I've got it up here. Boom, okay, here we go. Um, yeah, let's, let's I can share you mine as well. Let's see, share the screen. So this is my version of it. And I'll say that I um, processed this. I also shot with the 15 millimeter. Did I shoot with the Irix? I also shot with the Irix. My nice. goodness, it's like Irix day. Wow. Um, shot with the original Z6, not the Z6 II. Um, 12,800 ISO 3.2. Mm -hmm. Now this also, I believe, is a uh, eight uh, pass pano. Let's take a look here. If I just go back here, let's see, two, four, six, seven. Looks like I have seven. Two, four, six. Yeah, I have seven shots. And mm -hmm. what I've done here is I've have my pink ones uh, that are for the sky, and my yellow ones are for the um, are they, yeah. I think for uh, the ground. Nice. Here, so I used uh, Starry Landscape Stacker to kind of blend in that foreground mm. uh, with that, and then put it all together. I used I, I, I'm still intimidated by uh, PT GUI <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, but um, this is my take on it. I also um, the air glow to me it was a little too much, a little too green for me. So I kind of mine's got a you can still see it through here but I, I i definitely added a little bit more magenta mm -hmm. uh to this if you kind of see where i went plus 40 on that yeah it was super green it was super green it was yeah. super green yeah but i like to yeah um i like to have just i guess a little bit more of that uh contrast i guess and so i like that mm -hmm. you know i want that 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 land was warm and i wanted that sky to be a little bit more have a little bit more blue into it so there was just a little bit more contrast in there mm -hmm. um so but yeah there's a awesome. different i love i love it right we uh even there's even that. when you wait, are wait, just go all right just, just oh you have a, oh, don't stop sharing i was gonna flip between them for uh, a okay here we go hold on let's do it again let's do it again <laughs> you can just flip pop us. between them so people can see the difference yeah there we go we got that one and we got that one that one in that one now it's not a competition you don't have to tell us which one you like better <laughs> i really like games and i'm Aww. i do man i do well, well you know these are both deserving of uh of what we call wall bangers right and wall bangers, wall bangers yep. and a wonderful memory yeah you know of, 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 a, of a really a, a, a great night at yeah you know foundation yeah. of national geographic <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Wow, great job on your edit, Gabe. Thank you. Thank you. Nice, nice. Well, and also, I mean, I mean, well, I, I, great, great job on being you, man. You're just a, a joy to travel with. So. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I missed you, man. I was, I was just out in uh, Kanab. Um, a similar but shorter road trip was just mm -hmm. out uh, with B and H at WPPI, and then. Soon as that was done, had to head out to Kidab for the Outsiders Conference. What I'll say about that is the weather was horrible. It was cold. Oh. I didn't go out and shoot one night. It was it was it was unnerving. Oh. Uh, it snowed, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, it was just not. It was not conducive. I also was got got a little cold. when it was there, so um, but, sounding uh, better. Thank you. Thank you. 
Nice. And uh, uh, right, uh, Kathy's going to do a road trip. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's I right. love it. Yeah, no, I mean that this whole area, folks. It's yeah. yeah, well worth taking your time, getting a little lost, you know, and and, and Safe. really. What's that? Safely lost. lost. Safely yeah. lost. Yes, yes. Bring popcorn. Um, <laughs> Um, and, and really taking your time exploring. I mean, yes, the, the, the um, well-known things like, you know, uh, Bryce Canyon and Zion, um, the North Rim of the Grand Canyon, but that won't be open yet uh, during night during Nightscapers this year. Just that, that needs to wait until the snows melt. Usually that that is right. a few more weeks later. I, I, they usually announce that, but it's usually a little bit uh, May 15th. We, 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 I think we went there the next day, actually. We did. We went to the opening day. <laughs> opening day. The North yeah. Rim. yeah. And you'll so, be back. And yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. And you'll be at Bryce, right? I will. Or are you doing Bryce, right? Exactly. I'm doing, doing Bryce, Bryce with Tim. I'm doing the photo pills, Bryce. So I'm sure you'll yeah. explore a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe I'll take maybe I'll take Tim down to Grosvenor Arch. Grosvenor. Grosvenor, Grosvenor Arch. <laughs> Maybe get photo Yeah, in black and white. Black and white. All yeah. right. Funny because I'm, I'm shooting. I'm shooting Flim again. I tell you that. I yes, I saw. I saw you were. So, do you need the pano? Are you going to only shoot the panos with the pano adapter in the Mamiya Seven? Oh no, I'm <laughs> shooting six by seven. Six by heck, seven. Heck, heck. For all yeah. the goodness. For all. The yeah, goodness. yeah. Processing that at my home and and just shooting the eggs. So nice. this is this is nice. Can't nice. wait. Yep. Well, Seth, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know. Do you want it to be? <laughs> it's a it's a long haul back. Yeah. So I would it, write if you're looking. So I, what? There are some smaller towns. I mean, Bryce is obviously the closest. Yeah. Big town. Yep. That you can stay there. Yeah. Uh, but that's still uh, you still got an an hour probably camping huh? at Crotochrome. You know, yeah, camping at Kodachrome would be the for the way right. to go, right? Or, um, or if, if the BLM permits it, we'd have to ask them about that. You might be able to to sleep in your car, yeah, uh, at at Grosvenor, yeah, you know, because there's there's, I'd say ample parking there. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. Um, yeah, so like like Gabe was saying, we have other things going on in the area this year. You know, mm -hmm. like a lot of them we've mentioned. So if there's a workshop. That you were thinking about, which just want to stress again, um, if you see a workshop that's on your list uh, but it is sold out, always, always, always add yourself to the wait list because you never know. Yeah. So, a lot of people get on dream trips because of the wait list. So, don't forget to add yourself to that. So, if you want to go to Photo Pills Price or Grand Canyon North Rim, add yourself. Yep. Nice. Nice. Yep. Sandra's going to go to the Toadstools. That's a very popular, and that's that's an easy, I find an easy yeah. place. It's so funny. It's easy, Matt, but it was still like 45 minutes. Um, it's it's close. It's close. Close. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a, a country mile in, in Utah is, is 40 minutes. So It went by quick. I mean, so you've got good company. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to go go by quick. And, and the toadstools, what I'll say about the toadstools is, you know, you'll, you get a hike in. It's a very easy, uh, very easy hiking flat. Uh, you're kind of at the bottom of a little of, bit uh, up and down. Thing. Yeah. A little bit yeah. up and down, but you're sort of at the bottom of a dried river. A bed. washout. A yeah. washout. Yeah. And uh, you get to, you climb up to see the first one. And it, that's definitely the most dramatic. You can shoot star trails on one side facing North and then the uh, Milky Way rising on the other side. But it is worth exploring more, even walking further in. So definitely, like anything, folks, if you ever can, go and uh, right, scout it in the daytime. Go with friends. That's what it's going to be all about at Nightscaper anyways, is kind of collaborating, getting together with people and stuff like that, going out and and, 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 sh and, and uh, going out and shooting every night. That's uh, yeah. part of the reason why we also, you know, besides after the first day, we don't meet until 11 a.m., right? So you can <laughs> kind of go out there and... and, yep. and uh, get safely lost under yep. the stars yeah yeah for sure I, we we enjoy it it's funny we set up our cameras 
to do uh, long star trail rips to the north at that first giant toadstool. And then we went further up the canyon defile. Yeah, right, exactly. Like, That's right. And, and we went up with our second cameras and we shot up there and we saw flashlights waving around down where our cameras were. So we came back down. And Aaron King and his group were there and they're like, oh, yeah. we didn't ruin your shots. They were very polite about it, you know. Uh, so we all got to talking and, and it was it was fun times to be had. So you might bump into other people that like doing the same thing, especially when the core is about to come up. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Good stuff. Uh, I like the 45 minutes. The comments about 45 minutes kind of coming in here. All right. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. That one. And then this one. Exactly. That's true. That's true. That's true. Yep. <laughs> Well, Matt, that was that was fun. That was this was really nice uh, to relive again that the, that wonderful road trip and a, and one fun. of a, a very special panoramic night. That was that was we worked that scene, brother. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a true, you know, again, start wide, get in close, and then even when we we're that close, we went wide again. True. <laughs> I had one more picture that I wanted to show. That's funny. I I forgot about this. I had it all queued up. And I didn't, I'm not sure that I've, I've shown, we might have shown this in like promotional materials or, uh, but it's, it's a fun shot. Where did it go? Dear. Let's see there it. it oh, there we go. So I'm going to show that now. So I'm going to say, Ta -da! oh, cool. This yeah. The only other shot that, um, that happens, uh, while we were setting up, I saw that this nearly full moon was rapidly descending towards the horizon. So we got there, and there was still moonlight. Um, it wasn't helpful to us, but I just I threw on a two hundred millimeter lens, and and I wanted to to grab this. So this is a combination of two shots: uh, one longer shot to get the foreground silhouette looking really crispy and like not noisy. So I dropped the ISO and ran it for a minute or two. And then this really fast shot of the moon. And I think I, I set it on APS-C also. So it was, you know. Uh, nice. I, yeah, so I just wanted it to be fast and crisp. And this was this was also in the same place. And I thought that that was a fun shot. So Yeah, totally. Did you have something pulled up you want to show? Yeah, I got I to gotta share this one then. Hold on. Let's see. Ah! Oh, oh, ah, sorry. That's, that, no, that's the one I want to share. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah, because so, let, let's zoom in here. Hold on. Because <laughs> there's Matt with his uh, his pano rig. Hey, look at that. <laughs> so there it is, folks. Well, very easy, simple. He's got his glow in the dark tape there, you know, but a very, you know, you need, he's doing a multi, you're going multi row. I was, yeah. Steady as she goes. Steady as she goes. But this is also <laughs> in Grand Staircase Escalante. Lot, lots of fun stuff, every which way you go. Um, location undisclosed we couldn't tell you if we knew where it was <laughs> right, right, right exactly it was four-wheel drive is key four-wheel drive yeah yeah, yeah. it's key but lots of exploration you yeah. know uh come for the show stay to shoot <laughs> yes, exactly awesome gabe thanks for uh living the memories with me awesome thanks, that was thanks to everybody who showed up and and uh left your comments if you're here watching on the replay feel free to drop a comment or a question we will we'll, we will reply to you uh and we look forward to seeing all of you on a workshop or at a conference soon uh you know all of the good stuff uh we're really glad that you're here thanks for being there for us yes thank you folks good seeing you all tonight and uh keep seizing the night yeah seize the night we'll see you soon gabe have a great night you too bad